Hi everyone, welcome to the Econ channel. My name is Lin Yi Bi and I'm a PhD student at Drexel University. Today I would like to present the review paper titled Maxine Based Fibers, Yarns and Fabrics for Wearable Energy Storage Devices. This is a progress report on the journal Advanced Functional Materials following the 2019 Maxine Conference. As you can see from this outline, this paper is divided into five different sections. I'm going to go over the first two sections fairly quickly and focus on following three sections because they're the most relevant to the subject of this paper. First, the introduction. To realize many novel functions on textiles, such as monitoring body vital signs, we need compatible power systems with high performance, the ability to be integrated in textiles, and high flexibility and durability. Apparently, traditional rigid and bulky energy storage systems are simply not up to the job. One method to produce such flexible power systems is to develop functional fibers by incorporating highly conductive energy storing and mechanically strong materials into fibers and construct such fibers into various textile-based energy storage systems. Among various forms of energy storage systems, textile-based supercapacitors are particularly interesting because they have high capacitance and they have fast charge and discharge rate. To that end, many nanomaterials have been used for TSC electrodes, including carbon-based materials, studio-capacitive nanomaterials, and intrinsically conducting polymers. However, none of the three categories could meet all three requirements we need to make flexible power systems in textile form. In that context, Maxine, especially TI3C to TX, are promising to impart energy storing functions to textiles due to their high conductivity, their high volumetric capacitance, and hydrophilic surface, which makes them compatible with solution-based processing techniques. And in the textile industry, most processing techniques are solution-based, so we see a match there. Throughout the literature, we see many examples of incorporating maxing into fibers, yarns, and fabric, and demonstrate them for various applications. Coming to the second chapter, the author introduced three main maxing synthesis methods, namely POHF method, INSU HF method, and mixed acid method. All three methods have been used in maxing based TSC research. Within each synthesis method, there are many variables we can adjust, such as concentrations of acids, the ancient time and temperature, and the quality of the max phase precursor to arrive at the desired yield and properties of maxine. Dispersions of up to 150 mg per milliliter has been prepared, which enables various fabrication methods. Maxine flake size is also of great importance to its properties. To that end, there are many ways we can use to adjust the maxing size and size distribution, from the selection of synthesis methods to max phase precursor to various post-processing techniques. It's also paramount for any fabrication method to use a homogeneous and stable maxing dispersion. To that end, researchers have to select carefully the, uh, their solvents from water to various organic solvents and take measures to prevent maxing from oxidation within those solvents. It's also critical to tune the rheological properties of dispersion for specific manufacturing methods. The rheological properties of dispersion is related to its maxing size, concentration, and the number of layers in the maxing. In general, we want a high viscosity with a shear thinning behavior. As we can see from the left two graphs, it takes five times higher concentration for dispersion with small flakes to reach the same viscosity as a dispersion of larger flakes. Also, the flake size is uh, affecting the liquid crystal behavior of dispersion. As we can see from this graph, it takes many times higher concentration for dispersion of small flakes to reach the pneumatic phase. In addition to viscosity, we also want to consider the ratio of G prime over G double prime. The G prime stands for elastic moduli, and the G double prime stands for the viscous moduli. When we have a G prime over G double prime uh, over one, it means the dispersion shows a more uh, solid-like behavior. And when it's less than one, it shows a more liquid-like behavior. So it's not no, no surprise that when we use uh, the spinning method, we want a G prime 
uh, over GW prime over one because we want the fibers to keep their shape after uh, extrusion. However, when it comes to coating, we want more liquid behavior because we want dispersion to immerse the surface of the substrate. Thank you so much, Lin Yi, for the nice presentation of the two sections of this review article. We will learn more about the fabrication methods, electrical properties, and device performance for maxing based wearable energy storage devices in the following weeks. It is really nice to have more and more subscribers now and hope our video can be helpful. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.